We thank you for birthing the army in us, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Hallelujah, that great name, oh God, we bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God, yes, God. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God, and we'll worship you, oh God. We'll bow before your presence, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God, yes, God. We call you Savior, Jesus. We call you Helper, oh God. We call you Keeper, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we worship you, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh.
life in him. But what he didn't know, that about an hour down the road from Cyrus Total Memorial Hospital, there was some lifting up taking place. There was some praising taking place. There was some lifting up taking place. And he told me, he said, Mr. Holy out of nowhere, we see the sign of life in your son. So we begin to give blood. We begin to do everything we can to keep him alive. But the point I'm trying to make is, is when you lift him up, miracles can happen. When you lift him up, everything can happen. I'm not walking off these days for my health. I'm not lifting him up for my health. I'm lifting him up because I know what he can do. I know you got a story. You got a story. You, 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 you got a story. We all got a story. Well, we lift him up. It did happen. When you lift him up, sin ain't gonna happen. When you lift him up, deliverance gonna happen. I don't know about y'all. But I got a little brother I wanna see today. I got a sister I wanna see today. I see I wanna see today. So I'm gonna lift him up. I dare you to lift him up. Whatever you going through today, if you can't handle it. Them up. Come on, come on, come on. I know y'all got something going on in y'all lives today. You better lift them up. We lift you up, Jesus. You better lift them up. That's it right there. You better lift them up. You better lift them up. You better lift them up. I dare you. I dare you to try it. Nobody stand up against the wall not lifting weights, right? You go to the gym to lift weights to increase whatever strength you want to increase to get strong, things of that nature. But watch this on the spiritual side. When you lift up Jesus, the strength that you don't have, he'll give you that strength. The strength you don't have to deal with you dealing with, he'll give you that strength. So I'm going to give y'all about 30 seconds to give God the highest praise. Come on. 
trying to tell you. All y'all got a story. All y'all got that moment where you had to give it to him. God is too much for me. I got to give it to you. I ain't the preacher, but I got I to gotta stop. Y'all better give it to him. Y'all better give it to him. He love it when you give it to him. He said, if I be lifted up, and I can't, I can't go away from that part. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I don't know who in your family to be saved. Or you want to bring about the Christ, but you better give it to him. You better give it to him. You better give it to him. Let him handle it for you. Because I promise you. I promise you he will. I promise you he will. I can't make this stuff up. I can't. I promise you he will. Give it to him. Give it to him. Y'all give it up for Jesus on this morning. Give it up for Jesus on this morning. Don't give it up for me. Give it up for Jesus. I'm just standing here doing what God told me to do. That's all I'm doing. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the city of restoration. Coordination is what we call it, but welcome. YouTube, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Do we have any visitors in the place this morning? If you are, would you raise your hand? Just wave at me, please. Got one. Good morning, ma'am. Welcome, 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 welcome. Now, as you came in, um, I'm pretty sure you were given a bag, a yellow bag, and there's going to be a connection card in that bag. What I would encourage you to do is just fill that card out and turn it in before you leave. You know, we just want to reach out to you, check on you, how you're doing, things of that nature, okay? Again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, give it up for our visit on this morning. All right, here at the City of Restoration, as you all know, we do have what we call a vision. And this was something that was put together by our, our overseer, Apostle O and Pastor G. So what we are going to do for our visitor, we're going to introduce her to the vision of the City of Restoration. And it plainly states, our vision is to see God's people empowered in all areas of their lives and to see what was once lost, what? Restored. Y'all give it up for the vision on this morning. Give it up, give it up. Come on, come on. Here we go. of y'all know we do have a lot of things that are going on in the city back and forth throughout the service before apostle come up you'll see different things pop on the screen but i'm going to make this real quick and simple for you the best way to stay in contact with what's going on with the city is on your cell phone what you would do is you will send a text at core squad and you're going to send it to 81010 what's going to happen during that time once you send that text out you'll get all the announcements, you'll know what's going on in the city, such as Bible study, such as picnic we got coming up, things of that nature, and we'll keep you informed to what's going on in the city. Everybody good with that? Y'all clap it up for Dead Connected. Y'all clap it up for the City of Restorations. Y'all give it up for our visitor this morning. Amen, 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 amen. You may be seated. In Jesus' name. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm amped up this morning, but I appreciate y'all just having a seat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the reason why the offering is important is because I found a scripture. It's uh, Hebrews 13, 16, and they plainly states, And don't forget to do good and share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. And the reason why I say that because, you know, God is pleased with our giving. He's pleased with our ties. He's pleased with our faithfulness. And one thing about the city, we do have alternate ways where you can give your tithes and offering. We have the more traditional way to where you can walk down the aisle and place your offerings in the uh, basket here. My sister's are standing. If you decide to do it through your phone, through Cash App, it's dollar sign city, I'm sorry, dollar sign the city of restoration. And then there's give the fly, and that is the city of restoration once you look it up on the app and then there's if you want to do it by mail you can also do it by mail as well so once i'd like everybody to stand please and once you all have your offering ready you can bring it forth and um place it in the basket if you do so if you would like to do so
thank you, Lord, for this moment, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the tithes and offerings that received, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to just bless this congregation, Lord, in the best way you know how, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bless the speaker, our apostle that's about to come forward. This and all the things you ask in no other name but the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said amen. And while you're standing, give a great big hand clap for our apostle as he comes forward. If you would. would you just bless him with a hand clap of praise? Praise God for that. Amen. And to our dear brother, amen, Brother James, who did his debut on today and moderating the service. Amen. Praise God for him. Let's rejoice in the gift that God has given the body of Christ. While you're standing, do me a favor. Greet somebody around you, two or three people. Make them feel welcome. We say welcome to you. Amen. To our guests this morning, welcome. So glad you're here. Amen. Praise God to the family in the room and the family online. We welcome you. We're so delighted that you partook in or have chosen to partake rather in this service. Amen. We are delighted you came. We're so excited for what God is going to do in your life. To those in the forefront and in the background. God bless you. God bless you. Musicians, God bless you. To each of you, the technical staff and everyone in the, you know, behind the curtains, behind the scenes. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. This morning, my wife is actually going to be working alongside our children, our youth ministry team. And she's going to be pouring in and ministering to them while we're here in service. Amen. While we partake in this experience here. Amen. We pray her strength. Amen. I just so love the opportunity when afforded to me to sit down at times and receive, but also to be able to serve even those that were not always commonly found serving. Amen. Uh, we, we know our children, amen, are in great hands, not just today, but always. And we celebrate what God is doing there. Amen. Amen. While you are standing, might as well make the best use of the time, if you would. Grab your Bible in hand. Amen. Take your Bible out, uh, your tablet, your phone, and join me in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 14. Amen. While we are proceeding with service, let us not fail in remembering those that are sick and shut in and those that are also traveling. We want to remember our sister, Tracy Blanton this morning who amen we've been praying for as a ministry amen and her well-being there in Brandon Hospital we want to continue to cover her with our prayers we know that the prayers of the righteous availeth much amen pastor speak and find out what just in case the reason I'm saying this let me set the stage if you don't mind find out if you would find out ask amen I just want someone to help me out with this Praise God. Inquire. There's a reason I'm doing this. I want our intercessors to join me, those that can pray and know how to pray, to join me real quickly. Join me real quickly. Join me real quickly. If you call yourself an intercessor, you receive our emails, you know who you are. <laughs> so join me. Join me. Join me. You already assess where we are. Come on now. You already know what we're about. You already know what's in need. The reason I'm saying this, I need your strength. I need your strength. Your brother needs your strength. This family needs your strength. Amen. I spoke to my brother just this week, just on two days ago, and he told me it's been four years since the manifestation of this affliction, and we're trusting God will meet him at the level of his faith and our faith combined and our belief that God is a healer, that God is a keeper. My God, this is the time, this is the time, this is the time, the prayers of the righteous. Come on, let's pray. We can take a moment to pray. Even in the midst of our own agenda, in the midst of everything else that's going on, we can take a moment. Come on now, it's the prayers, the prayers, the prayers matter. Pray without ceasing, that's what God says. It says, let the strong, watch this, bear the infirmities of the weak. Right now, we collaborate, we touch and agree. We come into faithful agreement right now. 
that even by proxy God will make a minister out of us and minister to the need of our sister here in the hospital that even of the physicians and the staff and everybody can join oh God to serve in her Lord Jesus will come in faith agreement and stand in such come on now we believe we believe we believe we believe uh, we believe we believe we believe come on now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus one can chase a thousand two can put ten thousand to flight come on now this is the moment to show forth the strength of the body of Christ it's not predicated on the pastor's prayer solely it's it, come on now the Bible says that them call for the elders of the church let them hear hands on the sick and they shall recover there are so many of us that are right now standing in agreement right now in faith agreement and I believe uh, that before this service is over we believe for the good report we believe for the blessed report we believe right now for the magnificent watches the, ma the, the manifestation of the things of God in this hour to which our faith is believing for we believe right now that she is walking out of that hospital that she's walking out in strength that she's walking out in, in victory that even now eyes have not seen nor ears have heard all that has been entered into our heart but we declare it right now God's will God's promises they are yea and amen and they are concerning such uh, come on now we touch and agree now now that we believe uh, come on let's give God a praise uh, in that of our belief let's make a resounding praise uh, in the place of our belief right now in the name of Jesus uh, in the name of Jesus come on lift up your voices lift up your voices lift up your voices lift up your voices I want you to declare with me she is whole she is healed come on one more time she's whole and she is healed in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now I'm gonna encourage you I'm gonna encourage you for my brother Sam I'm gonna encourage you before the service is over inquire how you may be able to serve beyond today because you never know where the lead might the need may lay or lie what we do here in this moment matters, yes. But what we do continually beyond this moment matters even the more. How many of you know that to be so? When someone passes, when somebody goes on, when life happens, it's not just in the moment that you're most needed, but it's in the moments thereafter. Every now and then, check on somebody and encourage them and say, my brother, it will be all right. God has it in his hands. And I'm saying that is important. I'm saying that's important. I'm saying that is important. So if you see him passing by you, just say, I'm praying for you, my brother. And by the way, reach out to your sister. Sisters, reach out to your sister. Let's, be, well, let's make the best of it. Let's seize that moment. Let's capitalize on that moment so that we can in turn continue to minister. Praise God. Amen. Let's serve the best way we can. Is that all right? Is that good? Can I entrust you with that? Amen. I'm saying it's important. I'm saying it's important because we all have been there and we all have needed time. Amen. Amen. While we're praying for such, let's just remember, amen, there, there were a few that had surgery on this week. Amen. One Shaniqua. Amen. Amen. We remember her. As she also had a uh, procedure whereby we are praying her recovery and strength. Amen. Let's remember all it in this hour. Amen. Amen. When you have the word, would you grab hold of it? It's needful for you today. And I'm saying it's needful for everyone in the house because we need of it even the more. The word man shall not live by bread alone. Somebody, how, how many of you know you need a, the word more today than you have ever done? Come on now. I need the word. Somebody say, I need the word. I'm making it personal this morning. Mark chapter 14, we'll start our reading at verse 32. Mark 14, 32. Amen. Scripture says, follow along if you would. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, sit ye here while I shall pray. 
And he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore, amazed, and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if there or if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not, at, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit is truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And he again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither will they what to say to him. Amen. Just a portion of this text being read this morning. Amen. We will expound upon it shortly after we pray. Let us ask God's blessing upon this moment. Father, Lord, we thank you right now for the opportunity to hear your word. Now speak, Lord, beyond what has been prepared, beyond what it is that we presume, O oh God. We, we want you to pour into us just what we need. And so, Lord, this morning we come, Lord, ready to embrace your word. Lord Jesus, it is life unto the hearer. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you minister to such, set free such, heal such, deliver such, save such as is lost. We thank you right now, Holy Spirit, for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise, if you will, one more time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You may take a seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, praise God. This morning, amen, for a few moments, I want to, amen, consider a subject, a subject of life that we don't often talk about, amen, but it is a present reality. It's a reality we face daily. Um, I would suppose that in any uh, given day, you may, in fact, have more than one such an experience, um, some are more noticeable than others, some by reason we are able to quickly move on and beyond, while others take us aback every now and then. It causes us to pause, to halt, to consider, and to begin to really evaluate where we are and why we feel the way we do. Oftentimes in life, we set forth to do the best we can out of what we have been given. Even with the best of plans, so often the best of plans don't always manifest the way in which we desire. Um, so often things will happen. I like to say today, life happens. Life happens whether or not we want it to happen. And by saying so, meaning circumstances happen in life whereby um, many of things are beyond our control. Some things happen as a result of our decisions that we make, but there are a great many things to which happen just simply because uh, life again happens. Perhaps it's in God's will. Perhaps the enemy has um, some play in such. But whatever the matter, whatever the, um, the reason, somebody say it with me, life happens. I'm going to encourage you to take some notes because this is a classroom for the most part, amen, and I want to invite you to take notes simply because you may have to look back at such when life happens to you, amen, when it is that you have to deal with unforeseen, unexpected incidents, circumstances, uh, be it as it may. I realize that I'm in particular, uh, as a person, I'm particularly uh, fond of when things go the way I planned. I'm particularly fond, I'm particularly motivated and encouraged when I set forth to do something and it in fact happens the way I foresaw, um, foresaw it. 
and I'm excited about it because for me it means that I was diligent about doing the legwork, the preparation, and thoughtful enough, diligent enough to think it all the way through. But I'm oftentimes really, really disturbed, disrupted, um, challenged when I do all of that as I suppose to do and it doesn't happen the way I planned. It can become disconcerting to think that you can put your best foot forward at times, have the best intent at times, you can in part do all that you proposed or was thoughtful of doing and thought was required to do and yet not see the end outcome suppose it would be. It is not a matter so much now about what happens, but how you respond to what happens. So for the next few moments, I want to speak to you from the thought or the subject Handling disappointment. Handling, make a note of this, handling disappointment. Here in the text in Mark chapter 14, we see an account of Jesus being prepared, making preparation to take to the cross. And prior to such, he thought or saw it needful to pull away for a moment to pray. On several accounts in doing so, he left his disciples behind, presuming that they would pray along with him, only to find them upon returning to them asleep. I immediately would falter to the thought that they did not have the wherewithal or the stamina and maybe even be critical of the fact they did not do what was um, expected of them, but then I realized in part I could miss what was happening by reason of Jesus' response. Jesus' response was quite peculiar at best because he saw their aptitude, their ability, or their inability, but nevertheless moved on with his agenda. I have no doubt, however, that there was some point in all of this experience that he faced disappointment in, res in respect to how they govern themselves. Hence, he questioned them concerning the matter. You, you see, the, 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 the reality is this, and there's a reality that we all have. The reality is that you cannot control what others do. You can only control what you do or how you respond when things happen. So more often, disappointment is a result of our expectation not meeting with the reality of our experiences. I'll say it again. More often, our disappointment is a result of our expectation not meeting up or measuring up with the reality of our experiences. We all have a reality. And when disappointments, catch this, are not addressed, it can lead us to, oftentimes, to ends. Us being pessimistic or negative. When in turn things don't happen the way in which we presume they would. I want to uh, I want to put this insert real quickly into the message so that you and I can sit together and commune together and and really receive this. I want you to to do this for me. As I'm looking at you, I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them this these few words. I'm going to mess up every now and then. Oh Jesus. I'm looking at y'all faces and some of you all mm -hmm. it happened this morning. On the way out the door, Jesus, I know I should have forgot. I knew, I knew she told me that, you know, the keys were inside and I just knew, I knew there was gas in the tank. I'm going to mess up every now and then. Things are not going to happen the way in which we plan them to all the while. And you have a choice to make to whether be pessimistic or negative about it. 
You cannot control what the person next to you does on a day-to-day. -day. Much more, watch this, there are times if we be truthful, we can seldom even control what we do and how we respond when things happen. How many times have you had to double back and say, man, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I could have done that differently. Now, if you have that reality check, check your neighbor for a moment, for, for a quick moment, and realize they have that same experience as well. We've got to be careful because even beyond people, watch this, when we, re when we resort to being negative and pessimistic, we can even become critical of God when he allows things to happen in our lives. We can become critics of God and even begin to blame him, watch this, for his inaction or at times what we perceive to be unfair. How many realize that God is just, but he never said he was fair? Oh, this is good. And whether or not you want to respond or not is good. Why? Because even scripture tells us he reigns on the just. Come on, church, y'all tell me. And who? The unjust. We love when we can pull, call people out on the injustice they do and say, oh, they deserve it. Oh, but when it falls on you and you're like, hold up, Jesus, I've been praying. I've been fasting. I did everything I was supposed to do. I know I'm right. And it doesn't happen the way we can really become critical. God, this is unfair. Why me? I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Anybody real about it? I'm not talking, watch this, I wish I could just say it pertains to you, but even myself, I went, oh God, 2021, 2021, January 14th, when I met with my accident, I said, Lord, I can think about five people that deserve this. Not for nothing else. They don't love you. They don't even want to be in your presence. They don't want to come to church. They don't do anything. Lord, I can, and I'm just being real, I can think about them. But God, why me? But we've got to know that God has a plan. Somebody shout, he has a plan. He has a plan. What do you do when things don't work out the way you expect them to? How do you respond when life happens and in turn things happen the way they do? What happens when, when he throws in a wrench or some situation unplanned, unprepared for, just so happens to happen? You get up in the morning, you're about going on that job and then all of a sudden they issue a pink slip. They give you a note that this is your last day. Praise God. What happens when that happens? What happens when you set forth to do your day and you have all that you've planned about your day? and something fails to happen the way it should somebody shows up late uh, something doesn't make its way into the door the mail doesn't come the time that it was expected the check is delayed what happens and how important it is that you check how you respond you see Jesus's dilemma was not just circumstantial it was not just situation his greatest challenge here was with his very own disciples and I'm saying this because so often we can recover from things that happen that be, are beyond our control at times. Yes, we might be disappointed at best, but the greatest hit at times to our soul is when it happens by reason that, of people that are so close to us. Jesus' disappointment was with his own selection. I mean, come on now. You know how heavy this thing is. And if anybody needs prayers, me, I'm the one going to the cross. And you mean to tell me you can't just pray? I'm dying for you, Joker. But now you're sleeping. I just want you to see how heavy this moment is. He said in verse 33, he talked to, with him, Peter and James and John, and became sore, amazed, and very heavy. They noticed the weight he was carrying. And you would think that if ever a time they would be most sensitive, it is in that moment. The Bible says in that, watch this, and saith unto them, he, watch this, so they would not be ignorant of such. He made them very aware. Notice what he said. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Would you just wait here and watch? Which means to pray. 
I just need you praying with me. I am about to commit my life to the purpose of which I came. This is about to be finite. It's going to be complete. It's going to be done. When I do this, I am gone. I want you to realize this is not an easy task. All I need you to do is pray. And he wasn't gone long. The Bible says he was gone for what? A very little while. And he began to pray. And then, of course, in turn, he, respond, he returned and they were found sleeping. How do you deal with the disappointment? By reason of the people that you expected so much of. Let us suggest to you there are some places in our lives, some spots in our lives, some circumstances in our lives, or some thoughts and ways about us that can lead us in turn to disappointment. Make a note of this. This is the first note, praise God, or one of the first notes under this thought is, is simply this, that many of our disappointments are a result of high expectations. We hold high expectations or unmet expectations or unexpressed expectations. Let's first deal with the high expectations. We've got to be mindful that we do not hold people to perfection when in turn we ourselves are imperfect. Many a times we hold people, we expect perfection out of imperfection. Scripture tells us in James chapter 3 verse 2, for we all stumble. We're going to make some mistakes. And many times we get bes beside ourselves and disconcerted with people, upset with people over the matter that they didn't perform at the level of our expectations. Then we truthful. They're imperfect. They don't know what you know. We won't always measure up. We're limited at best. Hence why we need God's strength. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. How many of you know that you got some issues? We all do. We all do. And in turn, we've got to be mindful not to allow people to think us be per perfect. Oh God, it's wonderful when I love seeing when, when, when couples are, uh, are, are newlyweds at best or people are courting at best, when they're dating, you know, and they're like, oh, he's perfect for me. She's perfect for me. Oh my God, she, we complete each other's sentences until you get married and then you're like, why won't you let me finish what I'm saying? Because I complete your sentences. It was perfect when you could read my mind. Now you're going to tell me what I'm thinking? Everything looks perfect before. All of a sudden now, that perfect looks imperfect. You're like, mm, you know, there's some ways about you. Somebody say we all stumble. Be mindful that we don't hold people to such high regards that they never really measure up. And the truth be told, God will allow them to fail in front of you just to remind you how human they are. Many a times our disappointments are also as a result of unmet but also unexpressed expectations. I disappointed you but I didn't even know what you needed because you never even asked. You never even said. You never even. How could I come to know of myself or from myself what was expected of me? In turn, I noticed something particular here that when the first occasion Christ, watch this, Christ returned after praying and saw them sleeping, watch this, it was the first moment in which he then noted and said, Listen, you can pray with me, but for an hour. Perhaps they had been praying, but not praying according to his expectation. But he then came around and said, hold on here. I need you praying for at least an hour. And then watch this. So he set the expectation. Is it possible that many of our expectations or rather disappointments are a result of what you have not said? What you suppose. What you presume what you think. Things don't always align with what we think, what we presume, what we haven't said, what we haven't shared. You have to be intentional about sharing such. Sometimes our high expectation 
disappointments are only a result of the fact that God has a better plan anyway. Perhaps he allowed us to fall or fall short simply because he had a plan, a better plan in place. But there are times where our, our disappointments are also as a result of wrong motives. Our wrong motives, that's number two. The next point or the hatching spots for disappointment, many a times is as a result of wrong moments, or motives rather. In other words, the question to be asked of ourselves when things don't go the way we intended or expected is, whose wish do you or desire do you want to be done anyway? Whose will do you wish to be done? His will or your own? You see, many times the truth be told is we want, watch this, when, even when it comes to the spirit of God and the things of God, we want control not collaboration. I want to be able to control the end outcome. I want things to happen the way I perceive they should. And really we're saying we want to be able to control it and not necessarily collaborate with it. Perhaps God is trying to show us how to be flexible, how to go with the, the waves in the ocean. Have you ever noticed, uh, and for some of us, we, we, there are many swimmers in the room, but for those of us that don't know how to swim, we've had to learn how to float. And, and when you get in, 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 in deep waters, you got to go with the wave. You know, if it's going up, you got to be willing to go up. If it's going left, you're going left. Because the moment you start fighting against it, the current... All of a sudden, you become waned, you become heavy, you start feeling the friction and the resistance, and soon enough, you start going under, because you're trying to control rather than collaborate. It's the difference between submission and support. Sometimes we don't want to submit to what God is doing in support of what he's trying to get done. Because what he's doing is uncomfortable. Let's be real about it. Can you not just pray for a moment? I'm trying to help you to see that things don't always go the way you, in which you expect it. And you've got to be willing to render your control over to him so that you can cooperate with what he's trying to do next. God, I wrote out my plan. I wrote out my plan. I had my vision. But at the end, it, watch this, you've got to allow God to put his hand on it. Man makes plans. But the word says God orders his steps. Is it possible that he allowed this disappointment just to show that you are more about your will being done, not his? I just want us to see so that the next time things don't happen the way which we expect it, we don't count it a robbery to us. But perhaps God has a greater plan. You mean to tell me dinner is late and instead of getting upset, maybe God wants us to go out tonight. Maybe God wants us to lean into a change, do something different rather than trying to be uh, comfortable with the ability to, to predict and to be in control of what happens next. Maybe he's just allowing us to be able to trust him the more. Number next on this is perhaps that we have limited perception on things. Number three, why we are oftentimes get given to disappointment is because of our limited perception. We don't always see things the way we need to see things. Our limited perception oftentimes disappoints us. You see, it talks about his plans, that our sufferings of the present moment far outweigh what is going to happen. Proverbs 16, verse 9. Somebody goes there, go there with me. Proverbs 16, 9. This is what scripture tells us. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord, somebody say the Lord, directs his steps. Even in our sufferings, he has a plan and a purpose. He has a plan and a purpose. Even in our sufferings. You mean to tell me, God, that you have a plan for me? Yes. Not just when things go well, but even in our sufferings. Jesus Christ gave his only begotten son 
that whomsoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's high honor. But to be able to honor him as such, he had to die. He had to go to a cross. He had to be buried in a tomb. He had to be spat upon. He had to experience all that in turn one would consider condemn at best to who he was or indifferent from who he was he had to experience it all because it wasn't about his will or rather what he wanted for himself but what his heavenly father wanted from him sometimes we cut the process short because we get upset or angry in turn not recognizing that God is if he be the author and the finisher of our faith he knows the end from the beginning Somebody shout, Lord, order my steps. Do you know what that really means? That means whatever and however he chooses to lead you, you have to be willing to trust him in the process. Because we don't know all things. I need, there's somebody, and this is how I have to look at it, because we never know where we might be, but I've, from, I've come to find that wherever I am, there, I, there God is with me. And if I be a preacher, wherever I am, there is my platform. There is my pulpit. So is it possible that if there be somebody in the hospital that God needs to minister to, he'll elect one of us to go there? But how we get there is up to him. And yet we desire, we esteem God to be a healer. We esteem God to be a keeper. But then when we fall short and we get into circumstances, we so seldom remember that he that keepeth Israel is awake he does not slumber nor sleep that he is still God whether we are on the mountain or in the valley he's still God so if we are to know him as a keeper as a healer sometimes we've got to endure our own experiences now we can profess and minister to others because of our own experiences let not your limited perception cause you to, dis to watch this, dismiss what God is about. Disappointment will cause us sometimes to believe that what all we see is all there is. But in the behind the scenes, God is doing something. Behind the scenes, God is up to something. Order my steps, Lord. Order my steps. Behind the scenes, God is up to something. If we could oftentimes see what God was up to, praise God, we may have, yes, we might simply say, God, I thank you because I saw the end from the beginning. But then would it be according to your faith or to your knowledge? Whew. You see, one of the rewards to Job was that he remained faithful irregardless of what he experienced. And in the end, God rewarded him. Watch this. Not because of his struggle, but because of his faith. If he only knew that God was trying to give him double for everything he lost. If he only knew, my God, imagine if you knew that the circumstances you're facing right now was just God setting you up for greater. How easy you would lean into it. Can I suggest to you that if you believe in the word that all things are working together for your good, that even disappointment is working for your good. It was working for your good. Here's number next. Be careful of your mistaken priorities. Your mistaken priorities. God is more concerned for your character than your comfort. Somebody say it with me. God is more concerned for my character than my comfort. This is important. He is committed to you becoming perfect in him. He is committed to his will being done in your life. He is committed to working, watch this, working his will and wrath in his purpose in your life. How can I say this and stand on this? Go with me to Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. You've got to know that God is with you through it all, for it all. He is committed to the purpose he has on your life. This is what scripture tells You've got to be confident, somebody say confident, of this very thing that he which begun a good work in you, somebody read it with me, come on now, in you will perform it, watch this, until what? Until the day of Christ. 
He is committed to working out your character flaws. He is committed to getting you to a place of maturity. He's committed to you coming into his, his, into his perfection, into the things that God has called you to be. He's committed to that. So even when you get upset, he's still committed. Even when you refute to believe that God's hands are on your life, he's still committed. Even when you deny him totally, he's still committed. Oh, I'm going to work this thing. Praise God. I'm still committed to you when you leave me. I'm still committed to you when you're committing everything, every other sin and every other thing that you want to say about me. I'm still committed to you. This is Christ. But we want comfort and we perceive that comfort has much to do, watch this, with God's love. But watch this. Did he not say whom he loveth? Chasten means to what? Correct. And correction is what? Uncomfortable. No one wants to be told we're wrong or we did something wrong. And then when, in part, watch this, we find that we have done something wrong. Many a times we lean to, I feel so disappointed when God says, no. Who my love? I correct. You don't need to be disappointed. It's because I love you why I corrected you. It's because I want the best for you why I'm correcting you. Because I which began the work in you, I'm there to perform it till the end. So I want to see. I, I don't mind seeing your attitude. I don't mind seeing your dispositions. I don't mind seeing your, uh, your unfaithfulness because I'm committed to your process. Why? Because even the Bible says, the trying of your faith, the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. You know, James is taking, or talking rather here about the trying of our faith. And I had to go even further and, and study and recognize when he speaks to this, he's talking about our irritations, our inconveniences, our trials, our tears, our tribulations, all of such that come into our lives. All these circumstances that come about in our lives. And he's saying, listen, even through the testings, I'm trying to perfect you. You see, faith Patience. Then is now, how does it do so? How does faith work patience? This is what I read. It said, patience undergirds faith and gives it endurance to, pers what's this? to persevere under, until rather, the answer comes. I'll say it again. Faith under, or patience rather, undergirds faith and gives it endurance to persevere until the answer comes. In other words, you've got to realize how faith is a powerful source and force. It always works. And Christ is trying to encourage us in the place of our faith. Just because it doesn't happen the way you expected it, doesn't mean that it's not happening for your good. That God isn't doing something greater behind the scenes for your benefit. You know what's amazing is when movies are made, we see the one scene we see on television. But we fail to recognize that there have been many a cuts, many a recordings, and some didn't meet the cut. There are some things that are happening in our life, God just having us in re recitals. And he's going to let the best be seen of us. But in the moment when we're experiencing, we can almost feel like we're failing because we got to do it again. When in truth, God is just trying to set us up for greater. But can we outlast or go through the experiences of the cuts and not take it personal? Sometimes believers, if we be truthful also, that we will deal with disappointments simply because we have a false sense of reliance where we begin trusting in ourselves and trusting in our God. Can we take a moment just to acknowledge for a moment how many times we have gone about life putting all faith in ourselves, putting all faith in others, and not recognizing that they can fail? Praise God, but the God that we serve never fails. Sometimes we put it in our education. Sometimes we put it in our job, our connections, you name it, our money. 
All of this is momentary. It's fleeting at best. It's like the sands. But when the waves come in and pull out back, it's never the same. We've got to be careful where we put our trust. When we are disappointments, there are three things that we must be mindful of. Number one, watch your emotions, where they take you. You are allowed to have them, but they are not allowed to have you. Catch that? You are allowed to have emotions, but they are not allowed to have you. In other words, control you. You've got to be mindful. Despite what Christ was experiencing, the anguish of Gethsemane and his approach to the cross, he ultimately come up, came up about and said, Lord, not my will, but Father, your will be done. Don't you think for a moment that he did not feel abandoned in any way? In fact, he said, Lord, Father, why have thou forsaken me? He had the experiences nonetheless, but he committed to the process. You've got to watch your emotions. Somebody say, watch your emotions. Watch your emotions. Because sometimes our emotions will drive us to be rational. Watch your emotions. Man, I missed the exit. Ah. <sighs> And you're so caught up in missing the exit, you missed a couple more. Huh. You ever got so disappointed, you're like, I'm not going to eat tonight. And you know. You still laying there in bed, waking up in the morning, the devil had me asleep all night, awake all night. Because mm -mm. you've been disappointed somewhere. You abandon all hope altogether. Think, throw in, the, as they say, the baby out with the bath water. You throw everything out. Because you're disappointed. Watch your emotions. Here's number next. Don't shift the blame. Don't shift the blame. You see, the blame is an dis indispensable quality of our sinful nature. Here's what you need to make a note of. This is what the Lord told me to tell you. Misfortune is often a result of our choices. So when in turn, we see situations happen, sometimes it's because we made a decision that was out of the will of God in the first place. Not every decision necessarily so, but a lot of our decisions are a result of our choices or a lot of our disappointments rather. Some things we just got to realize we had no control over some things as a result of how we perceive things. My wife is perfect for me, but she's not perfect by any means. I'll say it again. My wife is perfect for me, but she is not perfect for, watch this, in any ways. Catch this. My wife is perfect for me, but she might be a curse to you. Y'all, y'all watch this. Do you realize that some things God assigned to you are a blessing to you, but it can be a curse to somebody else? He knows how much you can take. He knows what to put on you. That's why we need not covet what other people have. Because what might be a blessing to one might be a curse to another. So you've got to make sure that your, your motives and your, your focus is aligned or your perspective is aligned. Here's the number next on this very thought, the third part of this. You've got to respect the reality. Respect the reality, in other words, respect that things are sometimes the way they are. Do you know that loyalty, believers, has limits? Loyalty has limits. These disciples were handpicked by Jesus. And they couldn't commit to pray, but for an hour. Because here's the dilemma, and this is something important. I've learned this in ministry, in leadership, at best. Not only does loyalty have limits, but also does reliability. Most people operate, make a note of this. If you ever fail to remember anything else I say this morning, remember this. Most people operate out of convenience and not conviction. 
Most people operate out of convenience and not, are not conviction. It was more convenient for them to go to sleep than they were convicted to stay awake. Sometimes we're disappointed in people that we really, if we check their convictions, we realize they was more out of convenience why they were with you in the first place. You were the church close by, so that's why I came to the church. It had nothing to do with conviction that God sent them here. It's just convenience. Some of us, we only stay with certain brands because of convenience. We only wear certain things because of convenience. We only love certain things because of convenience. I can afford it. It had nothing to do with conviction. Oh, it's the best brand for me. But let something else cheaper be offered. And now you're disappointed. Because you didn't move according to purpose. I'm saying this because is it possible some of the relationships that have failed have really not failed, but you've just really become aware of why they were there in the first place? Whew. How we would not get our heart tr bothered and troubled when people finally show themselves as they've been saying all along. Whew. How many times did the person tell you, you know what, this is the way I am and I'm not going to change. And then you dismissed it. And then finally you, you grew up in Christ and you came to a place of revelation. And you start hearing them for what they've been saying. And you, be, and you start going back and saying, I wish you had told me from the beginning. And they're like, well, I, well I've been telling you from day one. And if it's not in words, oftentimes it's in actions. A lot of times we are operating out of convenience, not conviction. So we got to be mindful. And that's why the word says, guard your heart. The reason why I think this is so important as a message this morning for a Sunday morning is because sometimes we believe in part and we're naive to think just because we're saved, just because we're Christians, that we won't face disappointments. Just because we have Christ working with us and along, oh God, and we are in his will, doesn't mean things won't happen at times around us and to us. Just because you are called, just because you are anointed, does not, watch this, dismiss you in any way to face in disappointments. What matters is how you respond when it does. There are some things we must remember when it comes to such so that we can ensure that we remain resilient in the time of disappointment. Number one, stay faithful. Somebody say, stay faithful. Come on, you all should be shouting that one. Stay faithful. It's easy to jump ship when it is that you're disappointment, disappointed. It's easy to abandon the relationship when things don't work out. It's easy to forego what needs to be done when you're disappointed. But you got to stay faithful. Somebody say, stay faithful. Job said it this way, though he slay me, do you still have a yet will I trust him? It's not working out the way I expected, but I trust him. The same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. I trust him that he's going to be the God on the mountain as the God in the valley. I trust him. Stay faithful. Things don't always work the way in which we expect. People don't always operate the way in which we expect, but trust him. Ooh, is it possible that it was all about misplaced trust in the first place? You put more trust and faith in people than you did. Maybe the call won't come like you thought it could. Maybe it was that the, the conversation didn't go the way you thought it would. Will you still trust that God knows what you need? Somebody shout, I'm going to fail. It's not a profession of, of guilt. It's not a profession of, of weakness, but it's the reality. But that we are going to, while we are in this body, we're going to have some shortcomings. But though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. Yet will I believe on him. Here's number next. While you're facing disappointment, this is an opportunity to build your character. One scripture that comes to mind is Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Let's go there. The Bible says, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that the suffering 
produces what? Perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. God's priority is to develop our character. Just remember that it's working out for your good. God, you didn't allow it to happen the way it did because you're trying to affirm something in me. You're trying to build something in me. If we can just take a moment and really regard that God did not allow certain things to happen the way we presume they would simply because he's trying to work something in you and out of you. He's trying to multi what you, mature something in you. God, I'm so grateful, not because you gave me what I asked for all the while, but I'm grateful that you didn't always give me what I asked for. I'm so grateful that you knew what I could handle. I'm so grateful that you didn't give me things before your time. I'm so grateful that you you had a time and a season appointed to some stuff. I'm so grateful you knew who to bring into my life. I'm so grateful who, who you knew God, Lord Jesus, needed no longer be in my life. I'm so grateful, God, things didn't always work out the way I planned. So I learned to trust you. You're trying to build character. It's who I am when the lights are off. It's who I am when nobody is around. It's who I am at the end of the day. Lord, I'm so grateful you're trying to build O'Neill. You allow me to see my weaknesses, my vulnerabilities. And here's number next. When it comes to being resilient, get the right group around you. Somebody say, get the right group around you. This is what Psalm 118 tells me, 118 verse 8. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Trust not in man. In fact, the next scripture verse says in verse 9, says put not your trust in princes. You know, one context or one translation of this text says in celebrities. In part, there are many a times we put trust in people and we esteem, that we esteem so highly that in part we forget that they too can fail. But it's needful nonetheless that we get, watch this, that we get into the right group. At the end of the day, the group that you're in is for support, but you're looking to God for solution. The group is for support, but it's God for the solution. Let me get this right. Let me make sure everybody gets this because some of us are going to hear some prophetic utterances and we forget that the group was for support, but it's God for the solution. Don't you realize that there's some times where people mean well, but they don't know how to resolve what you're going through, so you'll need to look to God for solution. So when their words fall short, it is, wasn't them that you hold hostage or in contempt, but you ultimately knew it was God that was going to resolve the matter. Because man can fail. Understand at the end of the day, I'm here on assignment, but at the end of the day, you need to still go to God for yourself. The support of the group is essential because it helps you remain strong, but ultimately you need to go to God for guidance. Here's number next. Choose to find fulfillment and satisfaction in your relationship with God. You've got to choose to find fulfillment and satisfaction in your relationship with God. It was one author in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, who says, keep your, eye, your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. In other words, Lord, help me to be content with wherever I am and in whatever place I find myself help me to be content i will rejoice in the lord and be joyful in the god of my salvation help me to rejoice in whatever state i am whatever place i find myself help me to find some reason to be grateful because at the end if i trust that all things are working together for my good i should be able to rejoice here's my last point you've got to review your life's perspective, believers. You see, one of the reasons I realize um, we get so distorted and caught up in part is because we lost sight or we lost focus. 
We've got to realize even scripture tells us that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal weight of glory that far outweighs them all. 2 Corinthians 4.18 goes further even to say, so we fix our eyes not on what's seen, but what's unseen. For what is seen is temporary, and what is, watch this, unseen is eternal. God has something in store for why sometimes things don't work the way they should. You see, had I not been <laughs> allow, uh, 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 pliable and moldable, I regard while my wife and I are celebrating this year 24 years of marriage, the reality is that we were engaged, both of us engaged prior to this marriage. But I had to hear God all the way to the end. And you mean to tell me that relationship that I thought was God's will and plan, and, and then God said no. All, catch this. Some of us, because we are so stoic, we're so stoic on getting our will through, we push all the way and we push against God's will all the way to the wedding day. That was my story. This is lifetime. All the way to the wedding day. God said no. No marriage. I mean, Lord, but I already paid for the wedding. God, the people are getting dressed and they're headed there now. The decor is in place. The banquet hall is in place. We've got the furniture in place. We've got the bridesmaids that have their dresses. We've got the, the men that have their suits. You mean to tell me we're not getting married today? Somebody going to be disappointed. The cake, God, my Lord, we paid for the food, the caterer. You mean to tell me all of this? Somebody's going to be disappointed. Why didn't you all get married? Tell me, tell me something happened. Tell me something big happened. No, it's got to be something more than God said no. Why didn't you get married? God said no. Oh, but God. no, no, no. You, no, you, you, somebody must have cheated on somebody. It's got to be something big. How about God said no? Lord, I want your will. But when he says no, can you handle the no? When it has no other reason attached to it, but he said no. You know how many things I wish he had said no to? Praise God. Or rather that I was obedient to the no to, like my first car. Oh, God, I wanted that red Ford Escort so bad. I wanted it so bad. And only because it could be given to me now. But the car I really wanted, I had to wait for. And God kept telling me no. But I said, I want that car. And I got it a higher premium. Because I didn't want to be disappointed. Then drove it off the lot. Went to New York. The first day I get there, I hit a pothole. Broke my axle. First, day, first month I'm there, my car gets broken into. They didn't even steal the car. They stole my whole, all my suits. I had eight suits to go to church. Stole all my suits. And the hatch tray. We'd only have like maybe 60 cents in coins. And left the car and the radio. <laughs> I was like, Jesus... All the while in my mind, there was the car that I wanted, really wanted, but I had to wait for. But I didn't want to be disappointed. How many things have we entered into because we didn't want to be disappointed? But sometimes God allows that disappointment so to us that he protects our hearts. Stand to your feet all over this room. What is it that God is trying to tr teach you? Perhaps he didn't let somebody call you when, they, when you thought they should have called you. Because he was trying to sh show you, don't put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in the physician, in the nurses, the attorneys. Don't put it in that job. So when that bank closes, your trust wasn't in the bank. <laughs> you, you, we're going to be tried in our trust. We're going to be tested in our faith. Sometimes we're going to be disappointed. You're going to ask and God's going to tell you wait or he's going to tell you no. I can only tell you my stories. Of the many times I felt like, oh God, I wish you had come through for me on that, only to realize in the end, after saying so, he had a better plan in place in the first place. 
Oh, God, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus, in the place of where I lack my, where my faith is tried and tested. Help me to understand that you have a greater plan in store. Help me to understand when things don't work out as they should. I remember joining a program, an educational program that had been instituted and not soon after joining, everybody else had joined and joined the program and excelled and moved on. As soon as I joined, they canceled the program altogether. I felt it personal. Like, my God, everybody else had success by doing so. Now I join, and I feel like it's all because I joined. Disappointment. And then God used that moment for redirection. It wasn't rejection, it was redirection. Had I not seen the other end of the spectrum, had I not allowed God to open up my eyes to what was around the corner, I would have committed to that and expended all that I had when God had a greater plan around the bend. Disappointment, I've had a few. All eyes closed for a moment, indulge me for a moment because perhaps you're here this morning and some part of your life, some part of your experiences doesn't matter, measure up with your expectations. Maybe in part you're dealing with some frustration, internal turmoil or some discomfort as a result of Things not aligning the way you thought they would. I'm going to invite you to come. I'm going to invite you to come to this altar. I'm going to invite you to come to a time of prayer. We want to pray along with you and for you. Because I realize that in part, we need each other. And we need to be reminded that God has not forsaken us. If you're sitting or standing, I want you to make your way to this altar. I want you to step out on faith that God will meet you right where you are. You see, somebody needs to know that God has not abandoned them, that all things can work out for your good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. Somebody needs to be reminded that God is with them and for them. Let's give God praise as, you know what, it may not happen the way, it may not happen the way in which you perceived it would but that does not mean that God isn't with you nor is doesn't mean that God is not for you you'd be surprised to know that God has better for you that God has a greater plan in store for you you'd be surprised to know that God has prepared oh God angels to undergird you that you need not be discouraged don't put your trust in, in man today. Put your trust in God. This is a time for realignment in the body of Christ. This is the time for us to really put things in proper perspective. So we don't miss sight of what God is doing in this hour. Come on, y'all pray with me. So that you don't miss sight of what God is doing in this hour. Somebody needs to know that God is for them. As we pray for one another, as we pray today at this altar, I want you to trust God in this moment. If you are in that place where you just felt like you've gotten upset and, and you've gotten confused and perhaps even gotten disillusioned by some things, this is your time to repent and get back in alignment. This is your time to repent and get back in place and to ask God to realign your focus so that you can go back out and do greater, so that you can go back out and do even better. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time time praise God and come on now life won't always happen the way you expected children won't always operate the way you expected parents won't always operate the way you expected come on now situations family marriage husband wife won't always operate the way you expected boss employee won't always operate the way you expected God won't always operate the way you expect but that does not mean that God has not have sovereignty because he has sovereignty over your life. Come on, let's pray. If you're standing next to somebody, grab hold of their hand and begin to pray with them and for them. Perhaps they need your strength for tomorrow. Maybe they need the strength right now to believe. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
somebody needs to be reminded this morning that he is perfect in every way Good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. a favor lift your hands all over this room all over this room if you are able just lift your hands by lifting your hands this morning all I'm asking you to do is surrender to God all that is in your heart all that is in your mind all that you've carried on for so long and some of us so burdened by the things and the cares of this life that we fail at times to recognize that the same weights that we carry God is able to carry them for us that God desires to carry that weight that he desires to become acquainted with your cares and so he encourages us to cast it all on him to cast it before him and to trust him with the end that even the disappointments of life he wants for you to cast before him I want to pray that God gives you the strength to move on from that place. I want to pray that God gives you the grace and the strength to move on. That you won't allow it to hold you hostage any longer. That you will be free from it. That you will be able to move on to greater things. That you will be able to embrace the greater that God has for you that you will be free from the vestiges and the bondages that come with it that you will be liberated and no longer bound i declare that you are free today i declare that you are whole today i declare that you are stronger today that joy is your portion the strength is your portion that joy is your portion i'll say it again the strength is your portion i declare that it is yours for the taking and whom the son set free is free indeed now if you believe that i want you to put your hands together and say god i thank you for setting me free lord i thank you for making me whole lord i thank you for being my strength for being my keeper for being my peace for being my joy for being my complete and total everything I need in you everything I need in you if this morning you do not know the Lord as your personal Savior this is a great opportunity to give your life to him this is a great opportunity for you to say Lord I submit and commit my life to you we open this altar for you to come as we want to pray in a prayer of repentance with you we want to pray for what God has purpose on your life we don't want you to leave out of here never having that opportunity and likewise while I say that perhaps you are here today and you do not have a church home and you so desire to make this your home we invite you to come 
we too understand the need for covenant and the need for for covering and so we want to stand in faith agreement with you so that you know that there is a church that you can call home and that's what we're about this morning so before you go if that is your desire please don't let these people stand here and not see your smiling face we want to stand with you is that good all right while you're standing again lift your hands as i pray a dismissal over you praise god i pray that god's grace will go before you and with you praise god praise god amen god bless you god bless you well i know you all saved so i'm assuming it's the latter praise god. god bless you god bless you god bless you both welcome 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 god bless you to the family welcome home god bless you both i pray god's strength we'll make sure that we make a connection we, well, we got your information don't move we're going to love on you a little bit amen praise god amen we, we don't want to miss amen. thank you amen jesus i've been told that the children children's ministry wants to report that this morning five students received the baptism of the holy spirit praise god give god a praise god a praise give god a praise praise god praise god praise god praise god praise god look what god has done to god be the glory father lord we pray your blessings on our way out pray that we as we leave this place but never from your presence you'll go with us and before us and behind us thank you lord for the blessings that come in jesus name we pray amen god bless come on let's love on each other let's love on each other god bless you thank you so much